In this video, I'm going to give a few tips and suggestions on ways you can approach reading your novel. So once you've chose which novel you're going to read, now you have to get a copy. You can choose, do you want a paper copy, like a physical concrete book, or do you want an ebook, like you maybe see on the screen behind me here? Um, I'll go through some tips and suggestions for both. So let's say maybe you choose to read, you know, you go out and buy an actual physical hard copy of the novel you're going to read. Um, my first suggestion for people who are reading hardcover uh, or not hard copy books is to use, if I open it up here, a pen or pencil or highlighter as your actual bookmark, because it's, it kind of gets me at least in the mindset of why I'm reading this. And you know, I might have my other book beside my bedside table. And I read that one as a, you know, I fall asleep. I'm reading it for enjoyment. I'll read a couple pages, fall asleep. The novel for class though, I'm not reading this to kind of miss half of it and put me to sleep. I'm reading this for the course. Um, so by putting a pen inside of it, anytime I open this book, I have a pen in my other hand that automatically puts me in the mindset of I am reading this book for a reason. I'm reading it for a purpose. I'm reading it to be paying attention, to be taking notes, to be circling things, to be noticing things, to be um, actively engaged while I read. So my number one tip and suggestion for when you're reading a paper copy, especially if you're reading a paper copy for um, school, is to have that pen or pencil inside um, because there's nothing worse than thinking that like, oh, this is probably important. I might want to, you know, include this as an essay. Uh, my pen's all the way over there. Never mind. I'm going to skip it. If it's in the book, it, you're always in that mindset and you're always ready to take a little note or underline. Um, regarding those little notes and those little underlines, um, one thing I find I do, I notice other people doing is highlighting or underlining or circling too much. You want the notes you take to be pretty specific, to be, um, and, you, know, you know, few and far between enough that not everything is highlighted. If everything is underlined, how does that show what's important? I have a couple different things I do. You might notice on this page, I've got a couple things highlighted, probably too much actually. Um, but I also, I do little things like here. I, I've put a little star by something that is especially important. That's what I do because it's easy to see as I flip through. That's my big like, notice this one as you're going back through. Um, I'll also maybe underline things as well. But I also take little notes in the margins as far as, um, you know, just little things I notice or what what might stand out or just a little idea. Sometimes it could just be a question mark or a smiley face, but it's just another way I stay engaged as I'm reading. So that example is from Eden Robinson's Monkey Beach. Let's grab one more. Um, another thing I really like to do, like here's 1984. Um, another thing I really like to do is to take little chapter summary notes as I go. So in those books, in this one too, um, I like to have these little notes at the beginning of each chapter. So for example, chapter eight. So, you know, as I go through and read a chapter for the first time, um, okay, well, this happened. I go back to the beginning of the chapter and I have this one little place right above where it says chapter eight, where I say, just like the plot of what's happening, this and this and this and this. And then by the end, I have a couple words here. Like it says, Pearl District Old Man Antique Shop Coral room. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, that's eight words. Um, and just by having those eight word quick summary of the chapter, I know this is the chapter where Winston goes to the parole district, meets the old man, goes into an antique shop, finds a piece of coral, a paperweight, and goes into a room, a hidden room in the back. Those eight words have totally summarized the chapter for me. And that really helps for when you're like, oh, where did that happen? What's going on here? And just really quickly remembering like, there, if I flip here, chapter four here, part two, apartment, real coffee, a rat. I know what happens in that chapter. And th those little quick summaries really, really help me. It helped me to stop and pay attention, okay, as I'm going, because I have to stop for a second, go back, write down a word, go back, write down a word. So it helps me while I'm reading, but also as I'm flipping through later, it really helps me remember what each chapter was about. So if you choose a paper copy, try to have a pencil in it, try to have a plan for the notes you take so you're not highlighting too much, have your own, you know, legend system, um, and maybe try summarizing each chapter as you go through it. Choose a little spot to keep those little chapter summary notes. 
those are some ideas for paper copies. Now, let's say maybe you're going to choose to read this as an ebook. Um, I have a couple different ebooks on here. I'll, I'll show you one first, make myself a little bit smaller here. Um, so the type of e-reader you have or where you buy your ebook, all of that stuff is going to probably depend mostly on what type of technology you want to read it on. Are you going to read it on a computer? Are you going to read it on a phone? If you are going to read it on a phone, um, is that going to be an Android phone? Is it going to be an iPhone? Like, like that's going to matter most. I have a couple examples below me of where you might choose to buy your book or what e-reader you might uh, choose depending on what type of computer or phone you have, but I'll keep those lists um, down below me. Feel free to use those. I'll show you a couple examples. Um, this one is Apple Books. So if you have a iPhone, you probably already have Apple Books installed. You could buy your book in there. Um, I'll, I'll show you this version first. So um, I have a book open here, Margaret Atwood's Oryx and Crake, um, and I'll show you some benefits of using an ebook. You can do the same things like at the beginning of this chapter. I could still go in here. I could, you know, make my own note here, and I could add the first thing, the second thing, the third thing, the fourth thing. I could make those little chapter summary notes. Um, I could also, you know, do some similar things as far as maybe I saw this as being important. Um, one thing I like to do is kind of color code if I'm using an ebook. So maybe everything about one character is in yellow. Then maybe any time like a theme of guilt comes up, ooh, as a theme of guilt comes up, I'll just highlight it. Maybe I put guilt in purple every time ideas of the, the theme of guilt. Anyways, you can color code your notes really nicely. Um, in ebooks most of them have a few other options like maybe every time it's about i don't know a flashback or something i use the red underline again like in the paper copy i'm just coming up with a system or a legend of a way that i do it maybe one color mean one thing underline means something else i take notes when it's something specific but there are those tools baked into the ebook that i can do similar things um one really big benefit, I've accidentally done it a couple times here, but one really big benefit of ebooks is um, they have mostly have built in dictionaries. So, like this word here, if I just, in this case, double click on it, disinfectant, oh, that's a chemical liquid that destroys bacteria. I have a dictionary built into my book that I could look up. Maybe squiggling, is this going to come up? Oh, to squiggle, a short line that curls and loops. I didn't think it would have it. But yeah, like I have a full dictionary in here of words that I might not be sure about. So if you have an ebook, that's a really big benefit. So again, I can still take notes in here. I can still underline things. I can do most of that same own annotation. But I also have a dictionary built in. Another really nice function I like about ebooks is the search function. So let's say, for example, there's a character named Snowman in here. If each time I like where, like where, how many times does Snowman come up in here? If I search Snowman, looks like 263 times it mentions his name. I could scroll through here now and kind of find each time Snowman is mentioned. Or maybe, like I said, maybe there's a theme of like something like guilt. If I search guilt, it will go through the word guilt comes up in here eight times. You know, if I was looking for something about guilt, I could just type that word into the search bar um, and find every mention of it. So the search function can be really, really useful. I find especially when I'm going back and trying to like find ideas or remember something, it's, it's way quicker than flipping through my paper copy. So that's one option. Is this, you know, that it, it's the same thing as if it's built into my phone, it would look the same. Um, but another option that's totally free um, is something like um, read and write. So read and write is an extension. You can install it into Chrome. Again, I'll have the link below. Um, but read and write, you install it into Chrome, you add your book to it. Um, and it has a few other things. Like it has things like if I highlight this section here, I could choose, yes, that's important. That's a pretty big paragraph to highlight. It's not a great practice, but anyways, you have a built-in highlighter. Maybe I'll just delete that one for now. Um, but read and write is especially good at a couple other things. It's not as great at the like note taking, annotating, search functiony kind of stuff. But what read and write is good at is 
specifically reading, you can choose this section here and say, I want it to read this. Once upon a time, Snowman wasn't Snowman. Instead, he was Jimmy. He'd been a good boy then. Jimmy's earliest complete memory. I think we get the picture. So it has a built in text to speech reader that you can for free add into Chrome, add your book in. And it kind of, in some way, I mean, it almost turns it into an audiobook. I find that it's not totally as natural. I like to read along with it and make sure I'm adding some of that tone because, you know, as you know, he'd been a good boy then. It doesn't have the kind of human tone to it that a real audiobook does. But if you can't find an audiobook or if you want a section read, read and write is really good about that. It also has this nice screen masking tool that as you go through, if you're with someone who likes to follow along with your finger or likes to kind of, you know, have the ruler under the text to help you visually follow, this screen masking tool that's built in is really nice too. You can, as you go, kind of have it highlight, and visually kind of isolate exactly what you want to read. There's some other great tools built into here, but that's read and write. So whether you're choosing the paper copy, whether you're choosing an ebook, it's totally up to you. My main suggestion, whichever you choose though, is kind of have a plan of how you're approaching it. Keep in mind, you're not just reading this for enjoyment. Hopefully you do enjoyment, but you're going to work through this. You're going to have to come back to it. You're going to have to write about this. And having kind of that plan and approach, whether it's, you know, just keeping the pencil inside or whether it's um, highlighting and starring things using some sort of function in the ebook, have a plan for how you want to approach the novel. So it makes coming back to it and writing about it a little bit easier later.